So, Andrew, a lot of people are worried that AI is going to take over all the jobs of humans. So what's your take on this? I think that we have to think about what we mean by jobs and historically what's happened. If we were in Mesopotamia several thousand years ago and somebody showed you a plow, and at that time, like 99% of everybody was involved in agriculture, a plow would seem like a very scary thing. But because of the plow, we were able to invent things like teaching as a profession, governance, and a lot of the other things that we now consider essential culture, they didn't exist then because we didn't have the time to do that. And they weren't like superfluous things like poetry or art, which have value, but these were things that help build our economy. And I think that we get that every major technological change. People often ask, like, what's the job of the future? And if we look at how much jobs have changed in our own lifetime subtly, that we don't realize that. If we went back in time to like the 1980s and we talked to a teacher then and we talked to a teacher today and we told a teacher back then, well, in the future, you're going to spend part of your time in Google Calendar. What's that? Well, it's an electronic spreadsheet for managing time, sort of. You're going to be doing video calls. You're going to be using electronic documents. It would sound like an IT job. It would sound extremely technical, but that's normal. And in, Table stakes now. Yeah, and you think about that too is we use these tools all the time. So you and I are on our phones, we're checking messaging, we're checking these stuff. So I think 100 years from now, the value is going to still come in from things where we want people. We like people to teach us. We like people to manage things for us. I still trust. I trust you. I trust you to manage a thing. Maybe you're going to use a bunch of electronic systems, but I want you to make sure they're working. <laughs>